In the last edition, we have discussed the role of transportation and the principles of transportation in a supply chain. In this edition, we will discuss the different modes of transportation and the impact of transport economies in a supply chain. The different modes of transportation are given in the diagram. Air, water, surface and multimodal transportation. There are five basic transportation modes, air, water and surface. Surface has roadways, railways and pipeline. All transportation modes are vital for a sound transportation system. Let us discuss the merits and limitations of each mode of transportation. Road transport. Roadways is the widely used transport mode across the supply chain in any country. Trucks are used to transport materials. This industry is divided into two parts. The first one is the truck load and the second one is less than truck load. Truck load is used to move bulk quantities of goods which display the economies of scale with respect to the distance travelled. It is best suited for shipping products between manufacturing facilities and the warehouses. Less than truck load operations are priced to encourage shipments in small lots, usually less than a truck load. Less than truck load shipping is suitable for shipments that are larger to be mailed as small pack packages. The characteristics of road transport. Road transport is a cheaper mode of transport for shorter distances when compared to other modes of transportation. It is a highly flexible mode of transportation as the loading and unloading of goods is possible at any destination and it also provides door to door service. Road transportation helps to carry goods from one place to the another in hilly areas. It is the best suited mode of transportation to handle smaller shipments over short distances. Compared to other modes of transportation, the investment is less. Limitations of road transport. The carrying capacity of road transport is limited and hence it is not economical for long distance transportation of goods. Similarly, transportation of heavy goods or bulkier goods by road involves high cost. The cost of maintenance of the trucks is increasing day by day resulting in increased transportation cost. Let us now look into rail transport. Railways plays a significant role in the moving goods across the supply chain in the country. Our country has the largest railway network making it an important mode of transportation. Freight trains are used in railways to move goods across the supply chain. The freight trains are usually powered by diesel, electricity and steam engines depending upon the rail network they operate. The characteristics of railways are, railway is the best suited transportation mode for shipment of products like fertilizers, cement, food grains and coal in large quantities from the production plant to the warehouses. It has the lowest variable cost. Railways can work in tandem with other modes of transportation to improve the efficiency of the supply chain. Railways is suitable for carrying heavy goods in large quantities over long distances at the lowest cost of transportation. It is relatively faster mode of transport compared to road transport for a particular location. The limitations of rail transportation. Railway transportation is expensive for carrying goods over short distances. Railway network is not available in all parts of the country and hence goods cannot be moved through railway to those locations. It has to depend on other modes for reaching the destination. 
railways provide service according to fixed timetable which they plan and hence it is not flexible for loading and unloading of goods at any place according to the customer's requirement. Water transport. Water transportation is the oldest mode of transportation between countries as well as within countries where inland waterways are available. The characteristics of water transport are water transport is the cheapest mode of transportation to move large bulk commodity such as mining, chemicals, cement and certain agricultural products. It uses large ship and commercial vessels that can carry billions of tons of cargo. Water transport is suitable for moving large quantities of goods that are non-perishable in nature. It is an effective mode of transportation in international trade. The limitations of water transport. Water transport depends on the depth and navigability of rivers and canals. As this varies, different transport vessels are needed to operate in different places. Hence, this requires large investments and their maintenance cost is also high. Water transport is a slow moving mode of transport and therefore, it may not be suitable for transporting perishable goods. The water transport is adversely affected by weather conditions which may affect the duration of movement and the delivery of the goods. Air transport. Air transport is the newest but least used mode of transportation owing to its high cost of moving goods. Though it is high cost, the speed in which they move has other benefits for the supply chain on warehousing and inventory. Air transport despite being high profile, it still remains a potential transport mode for the supply chain. The characteristics of air transport. Air transportation is the best suited mode of transportation for small high value items or time sensitive emergency shipments that have to travel a long distance in a shorter time. It is mostly used by the members of the supply chain who have shorter lead times or advanced service levels and speedy delivery of goods. Air carriers move products that have high value but are light in weight. Limitations of air transport. Air transport is relatively an expensive mode of transportation. It is not suitable for transporting heavy and bulky goods as well as for short distance travel. Pipeline transport. Pipeline transport is a specific mode of transportation for moving products which are in the form of gas, liquid or slurry. The characteristics of pipeline transport. Pipeline operates 24 bar 7 and 365 days and move products such as crude petroleum, refined petroleum products and natural gas. The initial investment in creating the pipeline and the needed infrastructure is high. Pipelines are fixed and are not flexible. They can be used for certain commodities only and cannot be used to move variety of products. The characteristics of transportation modes. The various modes of transport can be compared on the characteristics of their speed, frequency, dependability, load they can carry and the service locations which they can serve. The ranking of the various modes of these factors are given below in the table. Intermodal transportation. Intermodal transportation is the use of more than one mode of transport for the movement of shipment from the point of origin to the point of destination. It uses two or more modes of transportation to take the advantage of inherent economies of each and thus provide the integrated service at lower cost. The most widely used intermodal systems are the trailer on flat car TOFC and the container on a flat car COFC. Package carrier 
is a form of intermodal transportation provider who uses air, truck and rail to transport the goods. They also provide other value added service that allow shippers to get benefited. Transportation economies and pricing. Transportation managers are responsible for determining the effective and efficient transport mode to satisfy the requirement of the supply chain members to improve their efficiency. Transportation economies and pricing depend on certain factors which the transport manager should be aware of. The transport economies and the pricing depends upon the economic drivers, costing, carrier pricing, transportation rates and ratings. The economic drivers are driven by the factors like distance to be traveled, weight to be taken for the travel, density of the products, towability of the product, handling of the product, liability and the market conditions for the product. Transportation costing can be classified into fixed cost, variable cost, joint cost and common cost. Carrier pricing strategy depends on cost of service and the value of service. Transportation rates depend on the region and the commodity to be transported. The selection procedure for the transport mode could vary from the simple decision either by identifying one feasible method of distribution or a choice of methods to distribute the products. The transport manager identifies the best mode from among the choice of alternates available based on the economic and the pricing factors. To conclude, we have to understand that with the advent of e-services, the lead time to delivery has reduced considerably. The movement of the product and raw materials cannot move through e-services and it has to restrict the movement to roads, rail, air, waterways and pipelines. Transportation has improved considerably with the mechanical development and the development of technology within a short span. It plays a very important role in the supply chain to distribute the goods from one place to another place in an efficient and effective manner to satisfy the customer expectations. In this edition, we have discussed the different modes of transportation and the transport economies in a supply chain. In the next edition, we will discuss the role of warehousing, objectives, types of warehouses and the warehouse strategy in a supply chain. Thank you.